What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. My name is David Clark, and this is Mild Sled. Now, before we get to today's video, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and thank all of you guys for subscribing and commenting and watching the channel in 2018. It's December 31st as I'm taping this, so uh, by the time I get it edited and online, it's probably going to be 2019. So thank you so much for subscribing. You pushed the channel just past 4,000 subscribers. You know, hopefully we'll uh, we'll get up to 5,000 before the end of the season. We don't have a whole lot of snow, but we do have a snow warning. So I'm supposed to get 20 centimeters tonight. So hopefully we're going to get out riding soon. So let's get to today's video. All right, guys, today's video is a response to Rob C. Motoring, who left a comment, actually left a suggestion for a video. And actually, some of the best suggestions that I get for videos are from you guys. Uh, Rob suggested that I did a video covering carb versus EFI, just the basics around, uh, you know, buying a sled with one or the other and maintenance. Um, so, and he goes on to say, you know, maybe elementary, but it's good knowledge for somebody that's new to snowmobiling or looking for a sled. And you know what? That's absolutely right. That's a great suggestion, actually. And I've been meaning to get to this video for a while. So it may be elementary, but when I started looking into this, I was actually really surprised by the strong feelings on one side of that argument or another. All right, guys, that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. So you guys that are more experienced, bear with me. I'm going to cover some really basic stuff as well. We're going to talk about what is a carburetor, what does it do, what is EFI or electronic fuel injection, what does it do, and what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. I'm going to do all that in two seconds, so grab a drink and hang out with me for a bit. Now I am still waiting to get my newer machine into my body's shop and change the track. So if you're waiting for that video, be patient, it's coming. All right guys, so this video is probably most useful to somebody who is looking to buy a used sled. And when you start looking, you're gonna find a lot of sleds in both categories. You're gonna find sleds with carbs and you're gonna find electronic fuel injected sleds as well. So luckily I have one of each. So this 1997 uh, 670 has a carburetor. In fact, it has two carburetors. It has two Mikuni carburetors. All right, so I warned you we'd cover some really basic stuff. So let's start off with where your carburetors are. So this is them right here. We've got twin Mikuni carburetors. They're right at the bottom uh, between the crank case and the bottom of your air box. So it's a really basic mechanical device for mixing fuel and air and delivering it to the cylinder. All right, just give you a quick walkthrough of how they work and it'll show you just how simple that mechanism actually is. Um, so basically your fuel pump will deliver fuel into the carburetor. It'll go into a bowl at the bottom of the carburetor. Okay, inside that bowl uh, are a couple of floats. As that fuel level rises, those floats will rise, they press on a little needle valve, and they shut that fuel off. So if you have a chronically flooding snowmobile, for example, that mechanism may be stuck. All right, so basically with fuel in the carburetor, uh, the movement of your piston creates a vacuum that's going to draw air through the carburetor. As that air passes through, fuel gets drawn up. It gets drawn up through one of two jets. So you have an idle jet and you have a main jet. So the simplicity of the carburetor is its advantage or its strength, right? You've only got a few points of failure. You know, your jets can get blocked. That float and needle and seat assembly can get worn out. Uh, you know, might have to replace a gasket between the bowl and the, the carburetor, but not really a whole lot to do. And if you maintain your sled well, there isn't a whole lot of maintenance to do on them anyway. So you can clean them once in a while if you have a problem, but, you know, really if you put good fresh gas in your machine and you put stabilizer in it during summer storage, if you drain the old gas out of the bowl in the carburetor, there's usually a drain on the bottom. So if you drain that out, you're not going to get solids building up in the carburetor. So I promise I'll do a carb cleaning video before the end of the season. I'm not going to pull them out for this video, but you know, if you guys have been wanting to clean your carbs and you're a little intimidated, don't be. It's pretty simple. I've done it on uh, snowmobiles. I've done it on outboard motors. Uh, you know, it's pretty easy. You pull them apart, you clean them with some carb cleaner, blow the jets out, put it all back together. It's not that tough. But the simplicity of the carburetor is also its weakness, right? So it can't make any adjustments for things like temperature and barometric pressure, things like that. The size of those jets is fixed. You have some ability to make little adjustments. You can change those jets. You can make adjustments to the idle. But really, once it's set up and doing what it's supposed to do, that's all it's going to do. All right, my new sled is a 2005 MXZ or MXZ 600. Uh, it's an SDI. That stands for semi-direct injection. So this is a fuel-injected sled. EFI, by the way, has been around since the 90s, so it's not a brand new technology. Uh, in a fuel-injected sled, rather than a carburetor, you've got a throttle body, and basically you have computer-controlled injectors that inject fuel at exactly the right time. So usually just after the piston has fully closed the exhaust port, so what does all that mean? Basically that you're not wasting fuel because these systems can adjust fuel flow based on things like temperature and weather and barometric pressure. 
But in this case, it's the complexity of this system that represents its strengths and its weaknesses, right? Uh, because it does all that using a ton of technology. So it uses a, a number of sensors in your engine, like you know O2 sensors and throttle position sensors and air intake temperature sensors, uh, things like that, to help the main computer cal uh, calibrate that fuel delivery. Okay, now on the plus side, uh, that precise fuel delivery results in a number of benefits, right? You've got uh, you know better power out output. You've got a more consistently operating engine, regardless of barometric pressure and temperature. You've got you know better emissions, better mileage. So there's a lot of guys that still swear by a carburetor over a fuel injected system. And if you get a bunch of old guys like me together, you're always going to have somebody that says, "Oh, they don't make them like they used to." And no, they don't make them like they used to because they make them a lot better now. Now, there's some misinformation out there, but there's also a lot of really valid opinions on both sides of the fence. So really, overall, which one is better? And it really kind of depends on what it is you're looking at. All right, one of the areas that those differences really show up is with ease of starting. So in that category, if we look at this carbureted sled, car older carbureted sleds are going to have uh, chokes or primers on them. So this sled has a primer. Basically, it's a little pump that lets me pump additional fuel in to change that mixture during a cold start. Now, this 2005 Honda Rancher also has a carburetor rather than fuel injection. It has a choke to accomplish the same thing. In this case, I'm changing the airflow into the carburetor rather than adding fuel. All right, so that is the first start that I've, I've done on this sled today, so it was a totally cold start. So it's not that difficult, it's not rocket science, especially once you get the hang of it. Um, the main downfall with a primer, uh, when you're new to them, is flooding them. But once you get the hang of it, it's not that hard. All right, now compare that to this newer sled with EFI. There's no choke and there's no primer to start it. I don't even have a key. All right, now, if I'm going to be fair, part of that is because I have electric start now, but even pull starting a fuel injector sled is going to be easier. All right, so what about reliability, or how likely is it this machine is going to start and stay running and get you there and back again? And in my opinion, hands down, a fuel injected engine is a much more reliable engine. Now, I know some people are going to disagree with me, and it's, it's funny, I had a couple of people actually that I spoke to when I was putting this video together that, uh, that said no, carbs are much more reliable, and I'm not sure that that's true. Now, I'm not discounting your personal experience, right? So if you had, you know, four or five sleds and you had a couple of them that were fuel injected and a couple that were carbureted, you know, and the carbs ran better, or if a friend of yours has a fuel injected sled and he's always breaking down and you're not, um, you know, that's one thing. But I mean, if the machines are properly maintained, um, really a fuel injected machine should be more reliable. Now when I'm putting videos together, I'll quite often sort of talk to the expert. So I spoke with the people that know, right? People that do sled after sled after sled. So I talked to a couple of uh, dealerships, snowmobile dealerships. I also went down to a motorsports dealer near me, uh, Sobel Motorsports. So shout out to those guys, really nice guys, really know their stuff. So they do service some snowmobiles. They're predominantly an ATV dealer. Uh, so they do Honda and Suzuki ATVs. But same questions for for those guys, right? What do you see more of? And hands down, the fuel injected machines are more reliable, and it makes a lot of sense, right? Because they are much cleaner, more burning, much more efficient motors. Uh, so you're not going to get, you know, even things like fouling plugs is not going to happen that much when you're burning fuel that much more precisely. So in terms of reliability, which machine am I going to feel more confident in on a long trip? hands down the uh, fuel injected machine. Next category, fuel efficiency or mileage. Which sled is going to go farther on a tank of gas? And, you know, hands down again, that's the electronic fuel injected sled. It's going to get far better mileage than an old carburetor sled. Because again, you're injecting that fuel at the right time. You're not wasting any fuel and you're adjusting for things like uh, pressure and temperature and, and those kinds of things. So, um, but the flip side of that is I don't really care. Right, so if you're if you're looking at sleds and one's got a carburetor, um, in my case, mileage isn't a big deal for me. I dump some gas in. If you look at the way I ride, you know, I'm going out for a few hours having some fun. I'm not one of these guys that goes out and rides hundreds of kilometers or rides all weekend. In that case, then it may be more serious consideration for you uh, the better mileage in a fuel injected sled. All right, next we'll talk about ease of maintenance, and I have to give the edge to the carburetor. Um, now, really, there isn't a whole lot of maintenance to do on a carburetor, but, uh, you know, I think most of you guys watching this video would be able to remove a carburetor, take it apart, drop the bowl, you know, clean the jets, put it all back together and put it on. It's not that difficult. With a fuel-injected sled, you know, 
if you have to fix something, you're probably taking it to the shop, right? Because if you think of all those components, the, the sensors and the injectors and the computerized parts, all of the electronics in the sled, there's not a lot of that you can fix yourself or even diagnose yourself. So that's one of the reasons that people really like the carburetor machines, uh, and I can't argue with that. So for ease of maintenance, I give the carburetor the edge. All right, now very similar, we'll say cost of maintenance or cost of repair. And again, I have to give the edge to the carburetor for pretty much the same reasons. They're really simple. There's not a lot in there that you're going to have to replace. And the parts for them are pretty cheap, right? So what are you going to replace? A jet, you know, maybe like needle and seat and a gasket. So those parts are really inexpensive. Uh, on the electronic fuel injection, if one of those parts goes, particularly the electronics in them go, then, uh, then you're looking at a little bit higher bill. So for cost of maintenance, that might be a reason for somebody that's looking for a used sled that doesn't have a very big budget, you might consider a carburetor just in case you have to do any repairs down the road. I think the guys that prefer carburetors over fuel injection, uh, the main argument is going to be something like, well, it's got all of those sensors, it's all those electronics that can break and go wrong, more stuff to fix, cost you more money. And I can't discount that argument because it's it's a valid point. But at the same time, I can remember, you know, similar discussions around cars, right? So they started bringing out all kinds of features. I mean, even power windows at one time were new, um, you know, power seats and heated seats and GPS and all these features that, uh, you know, it was the same thing that we when those features came out, everybody said, oh, it's just more stuff to break. But now it's just standard features because it's a better way of doing things. All right, so in terms of maintenance, there's not really a whole lot to do in either case, right? So, and some guys will argue with this. I know I see some people that, you know, will pull their carbs and their ray valves off every year. I, to me, that's that's overkill. And I actually did phone the shop and I looked through my manual, sort of what's the regular routine. So the first suggestion is just follow the maintenance routine in your manual. But in terms of carbs and fuel injection, there's not really a whole lot to do with them on a regular basis, right? I am not going to pull my carb apart every year and clean it. If the sled is running well... Um, it's not like your car's going to get dirty and you're going to be screwed your season's over. It doesn't take that long to clean them, uh, and it's usually a kind of a gradual thing. Um, so, yeah, if this sled is running good, you know, if it starts to run really rough at idle, then maybe that idle jet needs cleaning, you know, those kinds of things. That's when I'm going to pull it apart and clean it. If it's gone a few years and it's been running okay, so in this case, this machine, I haven't done any of that for, you know, I think this will be the third year now. So yeah, I'm going to pull the carbs and the rave valves this year and we'll make sure that they're clean. But really, it's not like a regular routine. I'm kind of, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Because every time you pull something apart, you can lose a bolt or a screw or damage a part, uh, damage gaskets, things like that. So uh, that's just how I look at it. Same thing with the fuel injection. There isn't a ton to do with them either, right? I know some guys will run like a, um, a seafoam, uh, which is a fuel treatment. They'll run that through their sled periodically just to clean those injectors off otherwise you shouldn't have to do anything unless you have a problem all right so what's the overall winner efi or carburetor um, you know i think that's kind of up to you to decide based on those things we talked about i think uh, in my case my preference is a fuel injected sled so i understand taking all those things into account that if i have to fix this it may cost me more and i may have to take it to a shop uh, i still think it's a gamble worth taking and i don't think that i'm going to have to have the fuel injection repaired but um you know again if you prefer a carbureted sled then you know there's certainly good arguments to be made for either and there's certainly advantages and disadvantages to both okay so i think that's it for this video you know if you guys again if you have opinions if you like a carburetor or a fuel injection or vice versa uh, you know post something in the comments below and let us know um, otherwise i hope you enjoyed that video if you did give me a thumbs up and until next time i'm david clark and thanks for taking the time to watch One of the weaknesses with a carburetor is the fuel that gets wasted during that combustion. <clears throat> the reason that an electronic fuel in it, <clears throat> it's cold. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to cover, you know, real basic stuff. So you got to remember not every, but <clears throat> now my mule, <clears throat> my mule. <laughs>